I'm Koi Jandro. We are here at Golden Apple Comics in the heart of Hollywood, right on Melrose, and I'm here with Alexandra Ship. Yes, Storm herself. One day <laughs> it's gonna work. What? <laughs> Isn't what? that incredible? I gotta read Robert. this. I'm gonna figure Study out the logistics. Up. And we are about to do some sweet, sweet comic book shopping. You ready? Oh, I'm so ready. You. So we're here at a comic store and you play a very important character in the world of comics. I'm curious, did you read comics growing up? Were you into geeky stuff? Most definitely. I loved reading comics, but I was very much so like, I loved the TV show, the X-Men TV show. But I can still do the song in case you guys are wondering. I loved figuring out where Storm came from. When I first saw her on screen, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, she's brown. <laughs> and being so excited about that. To see Storm, I wanted to know more about her. And then it was years and years of waiting for my powers to come in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm still waiting, but I'm I'm so I'm close. I've got hope that one day <laughs> it's gonna work. Something's gonna happen. So what Alex does at home. She's just ready <laughs> at all times. I do uh, <laughs> nothing. Uh, Tomorrow still nothing. <laughs> So we're gonna get to X-Men comics in a minute. So Superman Red Sun is an alternate reality where he lands in Russia instead of America. So this is a very intense, very different- Is it like different... a mega Superman? It, effectively, it is It is a almost bizarro, but instead he's Russian. And it's a very intense, very utilitarian, very hard Superman. Wow. So it's a totally different take. So we also got Naomi. This also ties in the world of Superman, but differently. Yeah, let's look at Naomi. She's a badass. Yeah, but she looks like me. She's incredible. I love a queen with natural texture. What I love about this is that it's actually a little bit darker when mm -hmm. it comes to its color palette so that you feel like you have to focus a little bit more. Oh, oh, origin issue. Okay. There it is. That's mine. Reggie Hudlin, who is a titan of comics, and John Romita Jr., one of my favorite artists of all time. And this issue, Storm and Black Panther get married. I love that you know exactly what I'm gonna be looking for. I'm just saying, this is like one of the most iconic moments in the history of comic books. Yeah. It is so incredible, the idea to have a king and queen of Africa, because I think for any black person, that's always kind of been something that we want. He's trying to escape his own stuff. She's trying to find love and family and community. And the way that they come together is really beautiful. We'll talk about that more in the next section, which is actually where we're going. Oh, cool. okay. So you've already played a number of iconic women, some fictional, some non-fiction. Is there a difference between playing someone like Kim or Aaliyah versus Storm? Kim, uh, Cube's wife and straight out of Compton, and Aaliyah, I had an opportunity to be able to talk to people who had actually had interactions with them, who were able to tell me about them and their type of humor. Like with Kim, I got to meet Kim. That's so real, because for me, I'm a very physical actor. I like to think about how they walk, how they talk. But with someone like Storm or, or Oro, you know, you really only have comic books. With Storm, I'm able to figure out if she has claustrophobia, then like in certain situations, she's gonna maybe try and make herself bigger in order yes. to combat feeling like she's being caved in on. Were you an 80s, 90s hip hop kid growing up when it was current? Growing up, my parents loved hip hop. I grew up listening to Tupac, Biggie Smalls and everyone and just really loving verse, loving the idea of, of poetry and being able to turn that poetry into something physical that you can then perform for other people. We're gonna tie X-Men to hip hop real quick. Uh -oh. huh. All right, so this is Ed Piscor's hip hop family tree. This is salt and Peppa, and it leads into the era, the year before the movie you're Look in. At these pages. So th Can I smell this it? Is, oh, please. Is that weird? No, you're at a bookstore. There it is. <sighs> It's in that newspaper style. Yeah. And this leads directly into Straight Outta Compton. So this is a prequel to the movie, frame by frame, the retelling of the origins of all of that. What? <laughs> Isn't what? that incredible? I want to give this to Cube. He would whole, lose his bananas. Amazing. So the same dude completely revamped the X-Men from the beginning. He retells it in his own way. So if you know the X-Men, there's still yeah. new discoveries. Do you know how hard it was for me to find this individually? <laughs> yeah. And y'all right. had it in a book the right. whole time? This is Chris Claremont, John Amita Jr. Yep. The Mohawk for me yep. is the standard. These are most of the comics that I read. This issue yep. 
It's enough. her going on a walkabout in Africa. Yep. It's her analyzing what it means to be a queen. We're gonna go through these quick because I got a lot of X-Men for you. Oh my gosh, okay. I love it. New X-Men. Grant Morrison. The art is Frank Wiley. So that is another awesome restart to the X-Men. When are we gonna talk about the over-sexualization of female superheroes? I don't know anyone whose boobs could hold that up. We should start that conversation at some point, not now. I got two books that counter that very point, trying to, as we evolve into society, newer books, I thought that might come up. You so know what? I just, I was prepared. Did you read There's my mind? There's a certain mind? order to this, Unleashed. There's a certain order to all of this. Tom Taylor is working on X-Men. He just finished this X-Men Red Run, but you'll notice, look at how all the women are dressed. The thing is, is like Storm doesn't have a 10 inch waist. Mm -hmm. These actually look like women because we're not only combating the male visuals when it comes to how powerful women should look, but also young girls. I remember growing up thinking like, I don't know if I'll ever have a six pack and a quadruple G boob cup size. But does that mean that I can be a hero still? You're still on? So this is your ever-growing stack? I'll carry it. I, right. I'm, I'm, I'm an X-Men. Let's, let's do it. Let's I'm go to the next. Storm, man. <laughs> So you use social media to bring attention to a lot of causes and a lot of important things. Yeah. Storm is very much that character. Is that something you drew to the X-Men, drew you to Storm? Was that parallel there? I think that it was just serendipitous. You know, I really like to focus on socially commentative things. So I made a promise to myself when I first started acting that everything that I did would have a subliminal, higher vibrational message underneath. And that's why I love playing Storm. She not only is a powerful black woman, but she also represents a possibility for a lot of people of color. So if there was a gateway drug in comics, if someone's never read a comic book, I know you know comics, any comic in the world, what's the number one draft pick? It's this comic named Chew. Chew is an in incredible, incredible world. This guy who whatever he eats, he can see the entire life and interaction that it had. So he mostly is a vegetarian <laughs> because Persane. why would you want to see like a cow getting slaughtered when you're eating a burger? But he helps to solve crimes in this post-apocalyptic vegetarian type of world. So he's like taking nibbles of people who have died and figuring out how they got killed and stuff yeah. and solving crimes. It's such an interesting concept to think that what you eat had a life before it got to your mouth. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people don't think that way either. This is a book that lends not superhero, I'm trying to not just pick superhero stuff. We know you're into the graphic smart, novels smart, themselves. Smart, smart, smart. This is Sex Criminals Volume 1. This is Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky as an artist. These two people realize that when they bone, time stops. And how do they use that power? To rob some banks. Obviously. So there's bone and there's crime, there's insanity, and the art is so lively and wow, crazy. Wow, the colors are incredible. Are fun? These are dollar books because I love the world of True Believers. You know the True Believers program? Yes. All a dollar. So if you've never read a comic, it's a great place to jump on. It's fantastic. What That's how I did majority of my studying. So what calls okay. out to you? Uh, oh. I might have put two books in there in particular. Okay, I might so. Have, that, and then there's one behind. Yeah, sir. I am obsessed <laughs> with Saga. This book is about these two people who are from, I'm talking like thousands of years feuding planets. She is a badass general, corporal, whatever. He is the son of like a great warrior. He's got ram <laughs> horns and like an awesome sword that he's like hella good at. And they're basically running in this like Romeo and Juliet intergalactic saga. It's fantastic. Highly recommend if you are trying to get into comics, true believers, they're all literally a dollar. There's a bunch of stuff here, but for now, let's go to the new comics. Female Furies is a group of intergalactic badass women. It is a, and a basically a DC Justice League of what? badass women called the Female Furies. A limited series, only a six issue run, but it was number three. That dream is the a little one. dream of death. I've never read this book. I'm gonna own that, but I've been called to it so many times because I love the colors. Wow. I love the covers. Zoe Quinn is writing Goddess Mode. This book has been on my pull list forever and I haven't got to it yet. So I'm gonna go sight unseen and say it's dope because I assume it looks great. So Sight Unseen, Goddess Mode. It's on my list, I'm gonna be checking it out. So we should actually check it, we got a lot of comics. Yeah, I'm gonna wear blue lipstick from now on. And like, we're living in this gold maybe. that's a movie. That's yeah, movie. that's what I'm saying. Hello. Hello. Please, please. I'm getting hooked up. Oh yeah. 34827. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. 
Enjoy. Thank you. Ready for some knowledge? <laughs> Am I? So much learning. This is so exciting. This has been another episode of Comic Book Shopping. I'd like to thank Golden Apple Comics. I would like to thank Alexander Ship. Thank you. Uh, go see a certain movie, June 7th. She said it, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And how you feeling? I'm feeling like I got a lot to read, but this is probably not the time to tell you that I can't read. Ooh. We'll talk uh, about it later. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort it, later. we'll sort it. And as always, I would like to thank Comic Books for existing. Go out, read some comics, see X-Men June 7th. Mm -hmm.